welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Now this is something I've sort of always wanted to try, to send an aircraft to Venus, just to see what it's like to fly around. How slow can we maintain level flight at service level? Is the upper reaches of the Venusian atmosphere similar to that of Earth's at sea level? And more so, I dream of a future outpost, not on Venus, but floating above it. A massive balloon maintaining a desired altitude for a small settlement, propeller aircraft or gliders traversing lower in the atmosphere to collect samples or explore, and a rocket awaits sideways ready to ferry its crew back into orbit, utilizing the thinner atmosphere up there for a relatively easy ride to orbit. Now, The possibility of exploring gas giants in a similar way is an exciting one as well. Though I fear the stability of my KSP save may prohibit that dream from becoming a reality. Perhaps we'll attempt something similar in KSP 2. For now, however, we can at least send a test article to explore the characteristics of flight on Venus. A glider called Vampire, the acronym for which I entirely forget. But one exists, I assure you, and it will be launching soon. But before it does, a small relay-capable satellite has made its way to Earth's sister planet. This small spacecraft called BATSAT will be here ready for Vampire's arrival much later on, just in case we happen to lose line of sight with Earth during the flight. Now, as you recall, we have sent missions to Venus in the past, but this marks the first time that we are sending something designed to be a permanent presence in orbit above the planet. And we've done the same thing with Mars and Jupiter by now. So slowly but surely, our galactic presence is beginning to spread. Vampire is a little bit heavier than Batsad though, of course. So in order to get it out here, we'll need another launch of the Nebula rocket. As Nebula sends Vampire into orbit of the Earth, I should probably mention we see the use of a new vacuum-optimized rocket stage on this mission and the BATSAT mission before it. Twin AJ-10s power the Wraith transfer stage, a less capable stage than Banshee, but geared towards less intensive operational use, you could say. This engine configuration is actually modified for use in our fully-fledged space shuttle as well, but that will be revealed next episode. I'm very excited to showcase that new shuttle because I've been working on it for months now. In case you haven't seen the streams on Twitch, I won't spoil anything else. Now we have the simple job of transferring our vampire glider from orbit of the Earth to orbit of Venus. Now normally with a save like this, the transit time from Earth to Venus is about 90 days or so, give or take depending on your injection, and you're basically going to want to be building things and flying things during transit so you're not wasting time, but because of where we are in the save, I could care less about wasting time, so we played this the good old fashioned Kerbal way, start to finish, launch to arrival in one go. Which was fun, it was, it was a breath of fresh air. Here is where our glider's mission truly begins. After waiting several months in orbit of Venus to ensure daylight during the coming entry and flight, Wraith performs a small deorbit burn and lets go of Vampire. Reinstated into its eccentric orbit once again soon after, both Wraith and Batsat launched first this episode will ensure that we have solid communications back to the Earth for the entire flight. Now, all the pieces are set in place and all we can do is sit back and hope that Vampire's protective shell is enough to keep it alive.
parachutes pull the glider from its shell, and its wings are now free to fully deploy. Vampire is finally free. Leveling out, onboard radar indicates an altitude of 69 kilometers. Nice. Comparable to the atmosphere of Earth at much lower altitudes. Uh, the aero pressure is still low enough for its small limited engine, uh, simply included on the mission to specifically test propulsive flight on Venus, to ignite and carry the glider even higher. Now, this engine doesn't provide any practical use, but it's a cool science experiment for us to run nevertheless. Also tested are swept wing configurations, as the wings can be actuated at will during flight, allowing the glider to safely gather speed and perform back-to-back -back loops, for science of course. Uh, but we understand flight in relatively normal atmospheric conditions by now, so it's time to dive down underneath the endless layer of clouds and into the depths of Venus. through the thick layer of clouds, the atmospheric pressure increasing rapidly, we once again witness the barren, alien surface of Venus, though with far more agency than simply falling like we have before. However, approaching lower and lower altitudes, deep within the Venusian depths, close to 60 times the atmospheric pressure of Earth at sea level, we encounter the Kraken. It's sort of my own fault for doing weird things at such high atmospheric pressure, but robotic parts are thrown askew, and our craft is hurled by an invisible force. An atmospheric vortex takes hold of our glider, and it skyrockets upwards. Ten kilometers from the surface, it finally subsides, and we're able to level out once again. Tornadoes on another world. What a magnificent discovery. touching down at 4 meters per second, its ambitious mission complete. The glider succumbs to the acidic atmosphere around it, and disintegrates on the surface. That's all for this episode, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and peace out. Would it be cool?